Um, during the height of the Cold War, um, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. The Soviet Union was then seen as the evil empire. So, um, the West decided to arm the Afghan freedom fighters, or people who we decided were freedom fighters, um, because the evil empire, the bad people, had attacked innocent little Afghanistan um, and were beating up on somebody much smaller than they were. <clears throat> the Mujahideen have to be the good guys, right? Well, the Mujahideen eventually morphed into the Taliban, or elements of them did. Um, at the same time, in 1979, <clears throat> the um, Iranians decided to boot out their Shah, their king, I guess, emperor or whatever, um, and replace them with a theocracy, an Islamic theocracy. This Islamic theocracy was incredibly hostile to the United States, so... Mm, it was decided that they were evil too. They they were also hostile to everybody else. They were hostile to France. They were hostile to Britain. They were hostile to the Soviet Union. They were hostile to everybody. So they were evil, of course. So what we did was, again, in the West, we looked around for some good people. So any, because anybody who is opposed to these evil people have to has to be good, right? So <clears throat> along comes Saddam Hussein. I'll attack the Iranians for you. Um, I'll uh, fight a long war with them, fight Islamic uh, fundamentalism in my region to a standstill, at least for a good 20 years. But I do need weapons to do it with, so give me a gazillion tons of weapons. Because I'm the good guy, remember? The Iranians, they're the bad guys. So, <clears throat> Saddam attacks Iran and basically, for a while, contains the uh, Iranian revolution. Uh, the Iran-Iraq War, bloody horrible war, lasted 10 years. Um, then, um, after a while, after our uh, friend Saddam has exhausted his country fighting the Iranians, he decides he's going to wipe out his debts from the war by taking uh, Kuwait over. Um, our friend, our good buddy Saddam, who helped us and did such a sterling service against those evil Iranians, then attacks innocent, good, friendly, gentle, kind little Kuwait, um, who that is a country that is governed by people that aren't all that nice at all. They have a bad tendency of abusing their hired help. They have a bad tendency of sidelining anybody who isn't a full-blooded, tribal Kuwaiti. Um, they have a bad habit of, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, just living like I don't know, we call the way that, that a, a completely spoiled, blind, over-self-indulgent over Gulf Arab, uh, would we call that uh, morally remiss? You know, the kind of guy that takes uh, <clears throat> sex tourist vacations to Southeast Asia but believes powerfully in Sharia for his own country, or at least strong Islamic uh, law underpinning the legal system. But he's a good guy, though, because... You know, he's uh, <clears throat> he's now being victimized by the bad guy. The bad guy is um, the guy who's going to take the West's oil from them, uh, you see. But uh, we can't just say that. So we have to say that uh, Kuwait is good and Saddam is bad. Saddam was good a while ago when he was fighting the Iranians. We loved him for that because, you know. So he's bad. Now he's bad. So we decide that we're going to kick him out and kill him. It took us 10 years to do it, but eventually it got done. But, you know, we had to deal with the bad guy. Um, same thing with, um, you know, uh, what's his face there? The Assad family in Syria. They're bad people, right? So we have to fight against them. They're bad. Uh, just like the Ba'ath Party, their brothers in Iraq. Uh, they're bad. So we have to do something about them. Now that we've kicked out Saddam, the Ba'ath Party people in Iraq, uh, because they were bad, we weaken, at least, the Ba'ath Party people in Syria, because they're evil too, you see. Um, <clears throat> they're evil because their propaganda, if not their deeds, tends to actually be really stridently, violently, froth at the mouthingly anti-Israel and anti-West, even though it is, when you look at it carefully, just propaganda. But they're bad people, you see, so we have to discipline them. <clears throat> so we weaken the Syrian regime, 
and we destroy the Iranian regime. Lo and behold, what appears? <laughs> ISIS. More bad people. Well, if you ask me what we need to do in that case is we need to attack the bad people, find out who the bad people, and the best way to do that is to support the good people. So we'll look around and say, okay, who's the good people here? <gasps> Let me guess. The Ba'ath Party. If we back Assad now, he's good now, you see, because badness is now the, um, their evilness is now the, uh, the preserve of ISIS, you see. So anybody who's opposing ISIS must be good, right? They have to be. If they're fighting evil, they're good. Um, so, yeah, so let's just uh, arm whoever will actually, like the Peshmerga, the, uh, the Kurds, let's arm them. Even though we've had serious issues with them in the past, i.e., um, oh, terrorism, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, we know that ultimately, though, they're good people. And we've now even got Canadian, British, American volunteers going off there to fight for these people. Delightful. These good stalwart resistors of ISIS. Um, ten years, I think, the Kurds will be the bad guys when they decide to, oh, I don't know, uh, destabilize whatever regime we happen to have installed in Iraq and Syria and to go after the stability of our good friends, the Turks, who are good up until they decide to go a little bit too far in the direction of Islamism. They haven't done this yet, but we think that they will, though, in which case they'll be bad, and in which case we can apply the thumbscrews with, uh, to them. Um, I don't know if we'd ever attack them. <clears throat> The Turks are perfectly capable of defending themselves, so I think that we're going to dance around them a little bit more. But you ever notice that, that this business of innocence and, and, uh, and uh, guilty, this, uh, the roles just keep, it's an endless game of whack-a-mole everywhere? Um, there's always somebody we identify as the guilty parties and always somebody we identify as the innocent parties. Um, it's never that simple, of course, but the very notion of that dynamic in human relations, i.e. good people, bad people, guilty, innocent, is what keeps wars going forever. <laughs>